Welcome to our worship. Our preacher today is our Superintendent Minister, Graeme Morgan, and our prayers today, our circuit focus is on Southcliff Methodist Church, so we thank our colleague, Reverend John Staten, for offering the prayers of intercession. I've chosen as a call to worship from our Singing the Faith hymn book number 651, words written by Catherine Walker. Lord of life, we come to you. Lord of all, our Saviour be. Come to bless and to heal with the light of your love. Tim Annan Hood on this week's fine material as a starter for the prayer. So let's pray. As the sun rises and the mist covers the ground on this new day, we gather where we are to worship. We join in love to praise the God we adore, our faithful and changeable friend. God in love gave us his only Son, Jesus, our Lord of life, our Lord of all, our Saviour and Redeemer. Let us put our past week in God's hands as we prepare our hearts and minds for this time together. Lord, we're ready to give of ourselves. 
we're ready to receive from you, from the Holy Spirit, through the presence, power and still small voice of calm, through the love of God that binds us together, we offer our prayer. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our reading today is the appointed Gospel reading for this Sunday from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, beginning at verse 27. But I tell you who hear me, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who ill-treat you. If someone strikes you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your cloak, do not stop them from taking your tunic. Give to everyone who asks you. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you good, do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be sons and daughters of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and to the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Thanks be to God for his living word. Amen.
I wonder, do you have a to-do list? If you're anything like me, you will have so many things on your to-do list and not enough hours in the day to do what needs to be done. I work on deadlines and the pressure is on to meet those deadlines. Unfortunately, I need to work in harmony with others who have deadlines and sometimes our deadlines don't work in harmony. For example, the order of service for the coming Sunday. My deadline would be to step into the church on Sunday morning and to let the steward and the organist have the order of service with the proviso that it was subject to change. But that's of no help to the organist or the musician who needs to practice the right hymns and the songs or to the one who's going to read from the Bible or to anyone else who's sharing in the service. So it is that most weeks the order of service for the coming Sunday is often high on my list of things to do. And then having sent the order of service, I find that I've got to live with it and let it dictate to me what the service will look like as I prepare. Looking ahead in my diary, I have a number of things that need doing for this coming week. I need to be ready and prepared for a pastoral visitors meeting, to Zoom with the circuit safeguarding team, to lead a midweek service of Holy Communion. I have another Zoom meeting which needs a lot of careful, prayerful thought and preparation. I also have a funeral and a wedding. And there is next Sunday to prepare for the order of service to send off, a sermon to record online for Queen Street. I have a never ending list of people that I want to visit and looking further ahead I'm already working on the agendas for the forthcoming local preachers and worship leaders meeting and the circuit meeting. Hopefully there'll be some time and space to work through my emails and to answer messages on the answering machine. I must of course set time aside to read the Bible and to pray. Oh dear, that's a dangerous thing, reading the Bible I mean. Take the lesson appointed for today as I read through this passage, this teaching of Jesus, I realise that there are things that I haven't included on my to-do list for the week ahead. Somewhere on my list I need to add the following. In the coming days, I need to love my enemies. I need to do good to those who hate me, to bless those who curse me, to pray for those who ill-treat me. And if someone strikes me on the cheek, to be prepared to offer them the other cheek. If someone takes my cloak, to let them have my tunic. To give to everyone who asks. And if anyone takes anything of mine, to let them get away with it. I wonder, are these things on your to-do list? This teaching of Jesus comes from Luke's equivalent to the Sermon on the Mount, teaching often referred to as the Sermon on the Plain. In verse 17 we read that Jesus went down with them, that's the disciples whom he has called to follow him. They are on the mountainside and he takes them to a level place, to a plain where he begins to teach them. This is radical teaching, the kind of teaching that will turn the world upside down. Believe you me, if you add these things to your to-do list and actually put these things into practice as Jesus suggests, people will notice. Do you have enemies? If you do, I think you would notice if they behaved in a loving way towards you. Is there anyone you hate? If there is, I'm sure you would notice if they did good things to you and for you. And likewise, you would notice if those you curse blessed you and those you ill-treated prayed for you. You see, such behaviour isn't natural. It's unnatural. 
And this is the way that Jesus wants us to behave. His followers wants us to live as Christians. To live in an unnatural way. Or to put it another way, he wants us to live holy lives. It's natural to hate your enemies. To do bad things to them. To curse those who curse you. To wish ill on those who ill treat you. And to respond physically to those who wish to do you harm. But Jesus wants his followers to respond in a different way to the way in which the world responds. To live a different way to the way in which the world lives. He wants us to live holy and righteous lives. The root, we read, uh, the root meaning of the word holy is different. And this teaching of Jesus says, be different, be holy. The teaching of the Sermon on the Mount and the Sermon on the Plain is essentially about right living. About how we as Christian people should live our lives. Seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness. There's been much talk in recent days about levelling up from the government. It's essentially a government plan for creating a society where opportunities are created fairly where all people can benefit. It's about community, it's about belonging and empowerment. And Jesus wants us today to stand with him on the plain, on that level round, where he shows us how to live lives that will truly level society up. Do you trust our politicians to be good examples of what levelling up means. Look to Jesus, hear his teaching, dare to be different, to stand out from the crowd, to live lives which are holy and righteous. What makes you and I different from the world? Jesus says, if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaired in full. As I read through this teaching, I confess that I'm very good at behaving like a sinner. I've had plenty of practice. Behaving in a sinful way comes naturally to me and Jesus calls me to behave differently, to respond differently, to live differently, to live a holy and righteous life and that is the call upon all of us to practice this different way of living. As followers of Jesus we're called to put our faith into practice. And the more we practice, the better we'll become. The easier we will find it to love our enemies, to do good to them, to lend without expecting anything back. And then our reward will be great. We will know what it truly means to be children of the Most High. He, our God, is kind to the ungrateful and to the wicked. He is merciful and Jesus says to you and to me, be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. If we were to plough our way through the Old Testament from Genesis to Malachi, we'd find that the Hebrew word which is often translated to mean mercy occurs approximately 250 times. The word is hesed. It's sometimes translated to mean kindness or loving kindness, goodness. It's a word which is used in reference to God's loving patience and God's loving kindness with his people. God made his covenant agreement with the people of Israel and although they often broke their side of the agreement, God kept his side, showing kindness and always a willingness to forgive. God remains faithful. He is kind.
kindly, has a forgiving nature, shows mercy on his people. You know, many people find the Old Testament hard work and difficult because they claim that God comes across as harsh and severe in his dealings with people. In actual fact, we find God in the Old Testament is steadily, persistently refusing to give up on his careless, wayward people. In the New Testament, the Hebrew word hesed is replaced by the Greek word elios and translated into English it means to be merciful or to show mercy. Listen to these words from Ephesians chapter 2 verses 4 and 5. Because of his great love, God who is rich in mercy made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. It's because of God's mercy that we are shown salvation. You know, a merciless world is a loveless world. And God shows mercy to us and to all people because he loves us. And this is love. 1 John chapter 4, verse 10 not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Here again, the words of Jesus. Jesus speaking to you and to me. As he says, be merciful, just as your father is merciful. If we are truly children of the Most High, then we should expect to reflect his nature and his being in the way that we live our lives, in the way that G Jesus truly reflected his Father's nature and his Father being, in the way that he lived his life. And that is what he expects of us, no more and no less. I need to revisit my to-do list to make sure that my priorities as a Christian are right. To ensure that I'm living according to the teaching of Jesus. To ensure that in the strength that he gives, I'm putting these things into practice. What does your to-do list look like for the week ahead? To ensure that you have time and space to love your enemies. To do good to any who may hate you. To bless those who curse you to pray for those who ill-treat you and in so doing you will be living the gospel according to the teaching of Christ and your reward will be great. Thanks be to God. Amen.
turn to our prayers for others. To the words, Lord, in your mercy, please respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, who rules over heaven and earth, we pray for a world torn apart by war, controversy and scandal. We pray for the leaders of the nations, that you will give them wisdom to make wise decisions which are for the good of all. That you would make them sensitive in negotiations concerning places of conflict, so that a peaceful solution may be found which is acceptable to all. And we pray that they may show care for all who live on this earth, so that the environment might be preserved, and so all people may have access to the resources they need to live a fruitful life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, who calls us into your family through Jesus, we pray for our own church, for the churches of our circuit, and for the churches which are our ecumenical partners. We pray that you will guide us by your Spirit to live life your way and to spread the word and the love of Jesus to all with whom we come into contact. On this day we pray especially for this church at South Cliff, which is sadly coming to the end of its active life. We give thanks for the witness of the Church and its members over many years. In particular, we pray that the remaining members may find a welcome in other churches, that the process of closure may run smoothly and that the building may be put to good use in the future, and that the service of celebration on Easter Sunday at 3 p.m may be an uplifting experience of thankfulness for the past and hope for the future. In all this, we ask that your Holy Spirit will guide us and empower us to do your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, into your care we commend all who are sick or suffering, especially any known to us. We remember those we have known and loved and who are no longer with us. And we pray for all who mourn. Grant them all, Lord, your healing, your wholeness and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we offer these prayers and all of our prayers to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.